In today's video, we're talking about the grace of God. So I want to share a few scripture verses with you. One of them is Hebrews 4.16. Let us come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I'm going to be switching up my videos a little bit and adding some parables from Jesus into my videos and then I'll give a scripture verse, a little teaching and then do a prayer at the end. So I hope you like this new format that I'm going to try and we'll start today. So today I'm going to read the parable of the sower and you might not have heard of the parable of the sower but it's about the farmer scattering seed and it comes from Matthew 13 verses 1 to 9 that's where the parable is taught and then the explanation of the parable is in Matthew 13 18 to 23 so I'm going to read the parable of the sower Jesus was a master communicator and he always knew how to preach to the people and give them wisdom it confounded some of the wisest people because he taught in these parables and he made it very interesting so you had to really seek him and I believe this is the way that God speaks to us today is you really have to seek his word you have to go after him it says seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you so uh, Jesus still speaks to us he is the word and when he was alive he was the word made flesh a hundred percent God a hundred percent man here on earth so he was able to share the father's wisdom through these parables and I just find it so fascinating how he talked in parables and really people had to meditate in their heart and really think about what they were hearing you know like it wasn't so straightforward and literal you had to hear it with your ears and then hear it with your spiritual ears and then let it let yourself meditate in your heart and try to understand the deeper meaning behind the parable so this parable of the sower is so powerful it's it really explains a lot of things about how people when they read the bible they might be reading it from a scholarly point of view they might be reading it from a more academic point of view but their heart is not being changed and when you read the bible you really want to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you through the written word. You want to read the actual words on the page, but remembering the Bible, the book itself, the physical book is not the full word. The word only comes alive when we ask the Holy Spirit for personal revelation from the book. So you read God's will, you read God's promises, you read about his covenants, you read about what God wants to say to you by reading the Bible. So I'm going to start today with the parable of the sower. Matthew 13, 1 to 9. Later that same day, Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake. A large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into a boat. There he sat and taught as the people stood on the shore. He told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath. Remember that, that's number one. Some seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plants soon withered under the hot sun and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, that's the fourth case, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear 
should listen and understand. So let's go through exactly what this means. So the farmer is us. We are planting the seeds and the seed is the word of God. The word of God is being planted in our hearts. When you read the Bible, that seed is the word. And if your heart is very receptive to the word of God, if you have a fertile soil in your heart, if your heart is very responsive and open, when you read the word of God, it'll deliver much fruit. But let's just go back for a minute to the four types of heart. It actually, this verse, it's talking about a farmer planting seed, but it's actually talking about four types of hearts that people can have when they read the Bible. The four types of ground, let's say. So the first one was the, the seed that fell on a footpath. So that is called the wayside heart. It was the seed planted by the wayside. As soon as the seed is planted in this type of heart, the enemy comes to steal it away and eat it. So that is the first type of heart. The second type of heart is called a rocky heart, a hardened heart. As soon as the seed is planted in this type of heart, it sprouts right away but it doesn't sustain because the soil is very shallow. So this is the type of person that when they hear something, they get so excited and they just really take to it, but it doesn't sustain because the plants, the, the, they don't have deep roots in their heart. They haven't been studying the word long enough. There's not enough deep roots to sustain them through the ups and the downs. The third type of heart is called a thorny heart. As soon as the seed is planted in this type of heart, it gets choked out by the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. So this type of person, person with a thorny heart, they are so enamored by the world, worldly success, achievement, their own achievement, things like that, that they don't really have that much concern for what the word says, what the Bible says. They're really living a worldly life and could be quite successful, but they're being, their life is being choked out by the cares of this world. The fourth type of heart is a fertile heart, the healthy heart. When the word is planted in this type of heart, it produces a crop of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. So I'm gonna now read the explanation of the parable as written in the book of Matthew. And so in the book of Matthew 13, 18 to 23, now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represent those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth, so no fruit is produced. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even 100 times as much had, as had been planted. So this is to let you know that God can take a wayside heart, a hardened heart, a thorny heart, and through his Holy Spirit, he can change it into a fertile heart, a soft, responsive heart that will hear the voice of God. And the voice of God doesn't always speak in English and probably not especially King James English. The voice of God could speak to you in impressions, in intuitions, in 
things all around you. You you will start to become, as you walk on this path with God, you'll start to hear Him in different ways through all of your five senses, through your dreams, through your visions, through intuitions, impressions. You just sense the presence of God all around you all the time. I want to read one more verse, which is from a prophet in the Old Testament that is prophesying about Jesus coming and about the new covenant. So in Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, and I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit within you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. So what does this all have to do with the grace of God? You may be asking yourself, this is an interesting parable about hearts and hardened hearts and how do we get over, you know, a wayside heart, a thorny heart, a hardened heart, so that we can get into this place of having a responsive heart, a responsive heart to Jesus, a responsive heart to God, a responsive heart to the Holy Spirit. How do we get into that state? Well, the first thing you have to do is accept Jesus and you have to accept Jesus into your heart and really believe. And it, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, then you will be saved. And that's the first step. So I talked about this in my last video. However, I'll just reiterate it again. The grace of God comes through believing in faith. So God gives us his grace. And if you think about it, God's grace is all of the provision you will ever need for every situation you will ever be in. So it's the resources, it's the time, it's the heart, it's the money, it's, it's the people around you, it's all of the things that you will need to fulfill God's purpose. God has already given to you at the moment of salvation. And I'll be getting into this in the next few videos of exactly what was given at the moment of salvation. It's so much more than you ever have been taught or taught to believe. What was given on the cross of Calvary when Jesus died for us was everything we'll ever need. His grace has already provided everything. We've already got it. All we have to do is receive it and believe it and claim it and appropriate it and stand on the word of God. So the grace of God is a wonderful gift. In the last video, I mentioned how God would never violate your free will. You have to come to him of your own free will and he wants to give you that choice because love doesn't control people. Love doesn't make someone a slave. Love doesn't take away your freedom. Love comes and gives and you have to freely receive. There's no kind of coercion. There's no kind of domination, manipulation, control, or anything like that. In fact, anything that is domination or manipulation or control is the spirit of witchcraft. And that's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to you through grace. And the Bible says that it is the love of God. It is the grace of God that leads people to repentance. So God is not going to force anything on you, but he's already provided everything you need. All you have to do is receive it. And if you understand exactly what happened on the cross, what Jesus did for us, you'll see that God was a perfect, holy God but there had to be some kind of payment. There had to be some kind of atonement for the sin in the world. Otherwise, if God gives things without that righteousness in place, which is his righteousness, then he would not be a holy and just God. So God had to punish sin. And the only way he could do it was through a perfect sinless, person. That was the legal redemption that God bought for us. It was all done 100% legally. Jesus had to come legally into the earth, born as a human being, because when Adam sinned, he was, he was given the authority by God 
and then he gave his authority to the devil. So Jesus had to come back and take back that authority and take it back into his hands and then he can freely give it to us. But if you understand on the cross, Jesus had to pay for the sins of all humanity, past, present, and future. And the, Jesus was our perfect sacrifice, and this was to satisfy the justice of God. Because if you think about it, people commit so many different sins, and it's not about comparing the level of sins. It's not about saying, oh, if you, if you stole, then it's less of a sin than if you murdered someone or something like that. It's not about that. It's about just sin in general had to be paid for by a holy and just God. Because if God didn't pay for it, then if it wasn't satisfied legally, then he wouldn't be able to give us his blessings. And I'm going to be talking about that in future videos. I'm going to also link a whole bunch of Bible verses in the resources for this video. And I want to end with a simple prayer. A simple prayer for everyone watching this video is, Heavenly Father, we come to you today with the people watching this video, this very video right now. And I say, Father, please give them a soft, responsive heart to hear your word through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I want to just note my hat. I want to say hats off to The Chosen, which is a crowdfunded video about the life of Jesus. I'll link it below in the resources, so check it out. I really recommend watching this movie series, which is right now available on The Chosen app, and I'll link it below. Let me know in the comments section if you have any questions or comments and I'll see you in the next one.